on the chair. So welcome everyone. It's so great to see you. I'm Dan Lambert and I serve this congregation as minister. Our progressive, welcoming, inclusive, and judgment-free congregation is a liberal religious community of diverse and free-thinking individuals. UUFCC is a spiritual community where reason and social justice matter. As people who learn, love, share, and serve together, we welcome all into our family. We begin our service each week by singing an invitation to gather together, even as we are scattered in so many different places. So let's start by singing enter, rejoice, and zoom in, and remember to clap your hands and do the jazz hands at the right time, okay? Let's sing together. No sound. All right, let's start the video over and then we can all sing even if there's no sound for some reason. We did test it earlier and it totally worked. I was right here. I heard it. This is just a you know one of those fun examples of technology glitches that happens. And it's not that huge of a thing. We are going to sing now. We're going to start the video over and see what happens. Okay, here we go. Enter, rejoice, and zoom in. Enter, rejoice, and zoom in. Today will be a joyful day. Enter, rejoice, and zoom in. Don't be afraid of some change. Don't be afraid of some change. Today will be a joyful day. Enter, Enter rejoice, and zoom in. And All right, please keep yourselves muted. Thank you so much. It is great to see everyone. And as we get ready to light our chalice, our worship associate for today is Ken, and he has chalice lighting words for us. Good morning, I'm Ken Brennan, your worship associate for this morning. And for those who don't know what worship associate means, it's we are a small group of people that meet monthly. We help the minister to plan and deliver our Sunday services. And maybe you would wanna think about joining us sometime. This morning we light the chalice, which is a sacred ritual with Unitarian Universalists around the world. Uh, lighting, the, lighting the chalice is something that unites us all. But I'm, we're going to ask you later to light your chalice at home, but first we're going to do, do this one in the sanctuary and we'll do it with the affirmation. Here are some Chalice lighting words. They come from Deborah Burel, a flame to light our path. Fire consumes and casts a bright light. May our chalice flame consume our regrets for the past, our fears about the future, and our worries about the day. May it light for us a path of joy and peace. Amen. Thank you, Ken. And now I invite you to join in our affirmation as I light our chalice. Love is the spirit of this fellowship, 
and service is its law. This is our aspiration to dwell together in peace, to seek the truth in love, and to help one another. And now I'll give you a moment to light your own chalice at home. Ken has opening words for us this morning. Go ahead, Ken. Our opening words are from Marnie Harmony, who was for a long time the minister of the UU congregation in Orlando, Florida. We whose journeys are always beginning, we whose mission always awaits us, we whose visions are bent on loving, we gather together here, we gather as a community, drawn together out of common need, each toting our own carpet bag of treasures and dreams. We gather together seeking meaning, yearning to understand life in all its dimensions as it challenges and expands, as it burdens, as it consoles and heals. We gather together with questions, the kind of questions that provoke us to the path of action. We gather with hope, the kind of hope that pulses on through uncertainty. We gather with tenderness, the kind of tenderness that only can be born from knowing human capabilities as well as human imperfections. We gather wanting certainty and having none, but we are wakeful to possibilities as we seek discernment and gentle judgment. We gather then unbound, but close. We gather thirsting. We gather draw to our, drawn to our source, our creator. Amen. Thank you so much uh, for sharing that, Ken. Uh, Reverend Marnie is still very involved in Florida with various churches as a guest speaker, and she serves as a mentor for, for new ministers sometimes. So it's great to hear those oh. words from her. That's a wonderful selection. So welcome again. It's so great to see you. This is a really big weekend in our culture. Lots of important things uh, happened. Yesterday was Halloween, uh, Shamhain, uh, All Souls Day, Day of the Dead. It was the end of... Um, Breast Cancer Awareness Month, hence my kind of fading pink beard. Uh, we had a full moon last night. Uh, we changed times last night. It's the last weekend uh, before the election. It's still 2020, so we've got weird things going on. And it's November 1st, which begins No Shave November, which always happens the month after Breast Cancer Awareness. No Shave November raises awareness for what I call man cancers testicular and prostate cancers. And so during November, we encourage people to not shave and get kind of hairy and whiskery. Uh, well, doesn't even have to be on your face, yeah, whatever. Um, just to raise awareness and remind everybody that men have to get checked. Did you know that just as many men get testicular and prostate cancer and die from that every year as women do from breast cancer? So it's just as big of a problem. So I'll be uh, sharing information about that through the month and getting hairier as the month goes on as well. It's always good to have visitors with us. So if this is your first time, I want to say hello and welcome and invite you to introduce yourself to us using the chat feature, which you'll find at the bottom of your screen. If you wouldn't mind, you could write in your name and maybe where you're from and why you decided to join us or who invited you or something. And I know that we are having visitors and folks pop in. This past couple of weeks, I've been working as an election deputy at a site up in Northport at Shannon Staub Library. And I've met a lot of people who recognized me or saw my name and have said hi, who have been visitors. Uh, so that's been really, really cool. And we got this fantastic note in the mail this week that I wanna share with you. Dear UUFCC, we are snowbirds from Michigan, Lansing and Ann Arbor. We attended your services December 2019 through March 2020 when, when we went home due to the virus. Every Sunday, we have been tuning in to Rev Dan's sermons and your services. Thank you for all you do and expressing our UU values. 
Sincerely, Dick Halleck and Emily Simon. Dick and Emily, that is such a great note. Thank you for sending that. Um, and it's great that you've been continuing to join us uh, from wherever you are and you may not be planning to come down. And some of our snowbirds are here, some are gonna wait, some are gonna come at all this summer, but it's just so wonderful to have visitors with us. So if this is your first time or if you're pretty new, we invite you to say hi by putting your name in the chat room today. Our opening song this morning is one that we're pretty familiar with, and it's just one that helps us remember the beauty of what we have and what is around us. It's called For the Beauty of the Earth, and this is a song that our choir has put together. So that you'll see the lyrics on your screen, you'll be able to hear the choir. So we invite you to keep muted, but sing along at home, For the Beauty of the Earth. Thank you to Jim Boyle for doing the instrumental music for that and recording it. Thank you to Linda for putting together all the different voices and to the members of the choir. Linda, I noticed that you snuck a picture of the Obamas in there. So <laughs> mm -hmm, didn't go unnoticed. Well done. That was fantastic. Uh, this is a time each week when we take time to learn more about some of our members. Today's member spotlight are Jerry and Alan Serrell. They are co-chairs. <laughs> of our climate action team. And so we're gonna take just a few minutes 
to learn a little bit more about Jerry and Alan. It's really kind of unfair because I asked them both to go and kind of put everything into three to five minutes. So we'll see how they decide to do this. Um, so Jerry and Alan, let's hear what you have to say. Hey, hi everyone. Um, well, Alan and I are co-chairs of the Climate Action Team along with Nina and Aubrey Sykes. The Climate Action Team's goals are to wear, raise awareness of climate problems within the UUFCC and broader community. And we also want to provide venues for climate activism. We've both been involved in Ann Al Gore's climate reality as attendees and mentors. And we've completed a 12 week course uh, through the United Nations and Columbia University on sustainability. This year, we hope to focus on climate friendly eating and are going to be setting up or connecting to Zoom and internet content for those people who are interested. My turn now. We've been up in the Pacific Northwest since about the beginning of June, specifically in Bremerton. Jerry's put a new garden in. Uh, she probably dug the holes for at least 200 plants, shrubs, bushes, and cuttings, and spread about 120 bags of mulch. Each bag weighs 45 pounds. We weighed them. Um, I've been amusing myself with power tools and ladders while she was doing that. We had grandchild number 10 was born in Little Rock this year. Uh, Lillian has a great head of hair. Uh, to make up for those who are losing it in the older part of the family. Um, we have been hiking when we could. We've been out doing river hikes and mountain hikes in the Olympics, which are fairly close to us. Um, the wildfire smoke did stop us for about 10 days. We got very hazy up here from the smoke from the uh, wildfires in Oregon and California. And today is sunny. It's going to be 60 degrees, but it's going to be the last one. It's going to start raining after that, and we need the rain. That's our report from Pacific Northwest. We'll be seeing you just before Thanksgiving. We'll be back in uh, Charlotte County. Great. Thank you so much for sharing, Alan and Jerry. And it's uh, wonderful to see you and to hear from you. Thank you so much for that. And uh, we'll uh, continue to hear from members each week. And I've gotten a, a lot of good feedback from this feature, so I'm glad we're able to do that. This is the time of the service where we invite you to share now in the chat room items that you'd like to put in the book of life. Um, anything that might be a joy, something that you're celebrating, something exciting that you'd like us to know about, whether it's about you or a family member or a friend, or maybe it's a concern that you might have, uh, something that may have to do with um, a worry or a health issue or something else. But we're going to share an instrumental for a moment and then invite you to share in the book of life at this time.
thank you all for sharing. I'm sorry to hear about Aubrey. I just uh, chatted with them Wednesday and they're supposed to be on their way down this weekend. So I wonder, are they still doing that? Do you know they are coming down? All right, good. So hopefully that's not uh, too bad of an experience for them. <laughs> I'm being snuck up on and I'm not really sure what's happening here. Okay. We hospital. You're going to have to get in so oh that everybody God. can see and hear you. Oh I don't know God. what you're doing. Okay. So are they spotlighted? Yes. Okay. We the Caring Hospitality Committee are here to celebrate National Poetry Appreciation Month. Greg Daniel, Louder. Greg, can you, can you be loud? Can you be louder? Louder. Do you want me to take this off? Okay. We still have to go louder. Are you fine? We still have to go louder. Okay. <laughs> Rev Dan, you have breathed new life into this fellowship since you joined us managing to keep us together in a new and creative way since COVID-19 entered our lives. You have heightened our awareness of just how precious our lives are as individuals. And as a part of this fellowship and greater community, your guidance, wisdom, communication skills, and ample sense of humor are all part of ours and your ministerial experience. We, you have demonstrated your care and concern for us, and we hope you sense the reciprocity Please accept this fellowship small gesture of gratitude for all your efforts. We look forward to growing together. Thank you. Thank you so much. We also would like to thank Gabby and Tom for their help. Thank you, Paul. Yeah, I'm here. <laughs> thank you, uh, Helen and Carol, for doing that and for representing the committee. Um, I am honored and I am touched and I just miss you all so much. Uh, I can't even tell you how much joy it brought me just to see them walk in today, to see two more faces. Oh. It's a challenge to do this every week in an empty sanctuary and to talk into the camera and to bring the energy that I want to bring to have an opportunity to bless all of you and to be blessed by you. Um, I just want this effing pandemic to be over as soon as we can so that we can be together. So thank you so much for that. Gotcha. This would be a really good time for a moment of silence. Um, I, uh, I encourage you to take this minute of silence just to recenter yourself as I need to do at this moment. Um, this is a very tumultuous and difficult time in our culture and we don't know what the coming week will bring. Um, and so being centered, having that balance is of ultimate importance. So we're going to give you a minute right now to be silent I encourage you to close your eyes if you'd like to, to focus on something that is your happy place, to release the burdens that you're feeling and to share the joy that and positive energy with the universe and with the rest of us as well. After a minute, you will hear a bell ding and then we will sing together Spirit of Life. Let's have a minute of silence at this time.
well for that time. Uh, just a reminder that we are continuing to receive your pledges and your offerings. Uh, thank you all for your continued faithfulness in that. And um, if you uh, would like, you can mail those in here. We do have uh, Mary Jane coming into the office, checking the mail a few times a week. Or you can use Venmo if you have a smart a smartphone and you prefer doing that. Um, and I want to uh, I want to uh, give special thanks to Ken Brennan, who in October challenged us to raise extra money for the three food banks that we've been supporting throughout this pandemic. And if you continue to read in the paper, you know that that need is not going away. It is getting worse, in fact. So Ken challenged us to raise $2,500, saying he would match that with $25 of his own money. And you can see from uh, where he is today that he's had to move into a place that's very plain and small uh, because we reached that goal. And we are giving just in October, just, <laughs> he has blow me away. Just from this fellowship, this small group of 120 or 140 or so people, $5,000. $5,000 to these three organizations in our community to help raise funds. To I knew we could do it. People that we need. Ken, there's Ken. Everybody say thanks, Ken, and wave. Thank you so much, Ken, for, for challenging us in that way. Um, we've met that challenge um, because that's what this fellowship does. Whenever there's a need, whenever there's an opportunity, we step up and we meet that need. What a cool idea, and thanks for doing that. Over $5,000 to those groups. So thank you all so much. Okay, I'm gonna take a deep breath because um, for the next several minutes, I wanna talk about the next week, and I wanna give you a chance to talk about the next week. Tuesday is, of course, election day. It's a day that we've anticipated with both hope and dread for quite a long time most of us for the past four years. The 2016 election and what came after it motivated me to get back into ministry and to really dive into social justice work. It was a watershed moment for many of us. I have emphasized this election, its importance and ways we can all get involved since 2020 began. There are some of our uh, fellowship who simply stopped attending the services because they got tired of me talking about politics in the election, and I'm sorry for that. The beginning of 2020 seems like a million years ago. Um, January and February, you know, we often talk about how time flies. That has not been true for 2020. Time has not gone quickly. It has drug on day by day week by week, and month by month. And it seems like we used to live in a very different universe than what we have now. Americans know this election is important. In fact, on the way in today, I was listening to NPR and they were talking about some international leaders. Internationally, they know that this is an important election. It's not just domestic policy, but it's also foreign relations policy economic policy that is hanging in the balance. It is quite probably the most important presidential election in 150 years. There's so much more than two presidential candidates, two political parties, and two very different ideologies on the ballot this year. As Unitarian Universalists, we know that we are also voting for our seven principles to be realized in America. We as a nation continue to work toward acknowledging the inherent worth and dignity of every single human being, or will we revert even further back than we have the past four years as a culture? Will we continue to work for the equal justice and compassion for all and in all relationships? Will we actually embrace our unique religious experiences and spiritual paths by accepting and encouraging one another in whatever spiritual growth is meaningful to us? Can a free and responsible search for truth and meaning actually exist in America today? Will we see the right of conscience through the democratic process protected, celebrated, 
in enhanced or will we continue to see the trouble, the intimidation, and the quieting of voters and voices that we've seen recently? Will we keep working for the goal of a world community with peace, liberty, and justice for all? Will we vote to honor the independent web of existence of which we are all a part, or will we continue to destroy the planet, which is our only home? There is no plan B. As Unitarian Universalists, we have a great interest in the outcome of this election because it feels like our values, our social justice work, and our very reason for existing is at stake. I wanna give you a chance today, as many as you as we can have time for, to hear from how you're feeling. As we anticipate the end of this election cycle, what's happening in your soul? What's happening in your heart? What's happening in your mind? What are you thinking? How are you feeling? In what ways will the outcome of this election impact you personally and the family and friends that you care for so deeply. What I'd like to do is, I don't know that we've done this um, very much with Zoom before, um, but if you have something that you'd like to say, um, I'd like to give you a minute or so to say that because I do wanna hear from you. How are you feeling? How are you experiencing this time? Um, whether that's with joy and anticipation, whether that's with dread and fear, whether that's with hope, whatever it might be. Um, if let's just not let's take the spotlight off and if everybody could go to gallery view that helps us do this um, and there's like 50 plus people on so i can't see everybody raise their hand so if you would like to share for a minute if you would type your name in chat and um I will uh, just call on you um, and then you can unmute yourself and you can just talk for a few minutes. I really do uh, wanna hear what you have to say um, so that everybody doesn't just hear my thoughts. I feel like you know my thoughts at this point. So who would like to share something this morning? All right. Does that, does that say Martin, Marin? I'm sorry, I can't read this, it's too far. Marvin. Oh, Marvin, there you go. I didn't see the V in your name. I misspelled my own name. <laughs> well, it's 2020, Marvin, you're allowed to do that. All right, go ahead, Marvin, for a moment, please. I just wanted to share that I read on Facebook that we had 84% Democrats in the Unitarian Universalist Fellowship nationwide, I believe the statistics were. So there were two black churches that beat us out, but I had to call my kids and share that that's where I've migrated to. And today I bet a hundred dollars on the election. I'm gonna give it to the church, I'm open. So that's all I wanted to share. Uh, thanks Marvin. It is true that we are among the most politically and socially liberal of all religions in America. Uh, so I guess I'm not totally surprised to hear that. And I don't know if I want to encourage gambling, but um, I have fingers crossed for you. I don't, I'm not really sure what to say. Thanks, Marvin. You could go ahead and mute yourself again, please. And Gina, go ahead and share for a minute, please. Hi, good morning. And what a beautiful day it is. And I did take the time to share in the book of life about I have cares, you know, and concerns. Yes, I I have joys, I count many blessings, but I'm worried too. Oh dear, um, Re Reverend Dan, you are de definitely speaking to some of my biggest concerns. Well, I guess with what you're discussing about this, the uncertainties with this un upcoming election, there's just so much at stake. And well, I just wanted to express that. It's like you were reading our minds there, Reverend Dan. And thank you for allowing me to share. Thank you for allowing all of us to share. May we just come together and may we all know blessings. May we win in the 
love, peace, truth, you know, and bring back civility and compassion and kindness to our nation and be that beacon to the world again, be blessings, you know, no blessings, have blessings and share blessings. And well, thank you for your time again. Thank you, Gina, for sharing. Uh, some of you may not um, have gotten a chance to know Gina. She's fairly new attending with us. But if you remember when we did Blessing of the Animals a million years ago, Gina brought the beautiful rescue greyhound that day. So that's how a lot of people can kind of keep in mind who Gina was. So thank you for sharing. Dennis, you're next. Oh, okay. Um, I'm going to um, very poorly paraphrase Samara. Um, she said this after um, service last week. And it basically was, you know, there was an, a swear word at the beginning. It begins with F, but it was OS. Here comes another challenge for growth. And it, that blew me away. I've been thinking about it all week. And no matter what the outcome is, we'll still be here and we'll still have to grow and probably work harder than ever. Um, that's all. Thanks, Dennis. And it's good to see that you are participating in No Shave November. Debbie, you're next. Debbie, you're muted. There we go. Okay. okay. Um, I was just saying that I'm scared to death. Um, I'm just really scared. And I'm so glad I have all of you. Um, and I've got a saying that I try to say to myself, in a world full of hate, be a light. Um, it's hard to do because I just feel rage sometimes. I mean, outright rage. And I was at Publix this morning shopping and there was a guy ahead of me that was talking to the clerk and he said the word nigger. I just looked at him. I had my mask on. I just looked at him and his wife um, kind of told him to be quiet. And I looked him right in the eyes. I just, I was just horrified. I came home and Carolyn lives next door to me and I just went over there. I said, I can't believe what I just heard. In this day and age, it just makes me sick. So it's hard to be in a world full of light, uh, full of hay, be a light. But anyway, I'm just really scared. That's all. Thanks for sharing, Debbie. And obviously you're not the only one with those feelings. And I hear those kinds of stories quite a bit. But that saying about in a world full of hate, be a light, that is literally why we light a chalice each week as Unitarian Universalists. The chalice comes from the idea of being a light, a beacon of hope uh, in World War II to Jews and others who were trying to escape persecution. They needed a safe place. The light was the symbol of that safe place. Um, so let's all, no matter what happens, work on trying to be that beacon of light. Not that it's gonna be easy. We have work to do regardless, but thank you for that important reminder. And our hearts are certainly with you, Debbie. Laura, I believe you're next. Well, I understand exactly what Debbie is feeling. And I come to church on Sunday morning to try to be a nicer person. And I'll quit coming to church when I learn how to be kind to people that I don't agree with and people who are cruel. And I'm, um, I don't know if I'm looking forward to that challenge coming up, but that's what I'm thinking is I would really strive to try to be kind and it's tough. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, thank you for that, Laura. Uh, it seems like one of 
the most unfortunate things about the past four years is that we have a president who has stoked who has stoked the fuels of division, of hatred, and he's made it okay. He has made hatred and being mean mainstream and acceptable because we are seeing it. We hear it from some of our UUFCC family about what neighbors say to them or what they hear at the store, like, <clears throat> like Debbie shared. We see it in public all the time, people driving down the street, um, the bumper stickers they have, just it shares that attitude. But we also have to keep in mind that Trump didn't create this. He is an outcome of what already pre-existed in our culture and it bubbled to the surface because of Obama's election, because so many people were freaked out that now we have a black president, what's going to happen to our white majority culture? It would be good if we keep in mind that sociologists and other really smart people tell us that sometime in the next 20 to 30 years, those of us who are of white European descent will become the minority population in the United States. And what will happen when the minorities that have been so mistreated throughout our history have the majority, have the power, have the political appointees, have the judicial appointees who are running our businesses. The biggest fear of the white supremacist is that those minorities will treat us white people the way we have treated them for hundreds of years. That's why we're seeing so much hatred. Fortunately, we get to know so many of those who have been able to rise and have their voices heard that we know that that hatred is not within them. Their motivation is not to pay back. It's not retribution. It's to bring love, to bring joy, to create a better society. That's what I wanna be a part of as well. Katie Brown, it looks like you're next. Yeah, I just wanted to share that um, I, I'm very frightened too. And um, recently I have started taking drum lessons and every week I get an assignment to learn a different beat. And it, it has helped me so much because when I'm focused on that beat, I my mind is not on all the stuff that stresses me out and it's been so good for me. And I hope everybody finds something like that that will help them. And I recently heard a fellow talking on the internet saying, no matter how unkind people are to you, always be kind back to them because eventually they will look like the jerk and you'll be okay with yourself. Thanks for letting me share. Yeah, thank you, Katie. <clears throat> That's all so true. Marty, I believe you're next. Are you muted, Marty? All right, let's see if we can unmute him. Okay. Um, oh, there we go. Can you hear me now? Yep, go ahead. We can hear you now. Well, it's not Marty, it's Norma. But I'm, oh, Norma. IPad. Um. Reverend Dan, I just want to express my appreciation for your being willing to bring up any topics. And even though we may sometimes disagree, that's okay. Um, but I appreciate that openness about no matter what's happening in the world, you're willing to, to bring it up and, and address it. And whether or not we agree with you or don't agree with you, I just appreciate you being willing to, to have it discuss it. Thank you. Thank you for that. I do appreciate it. And I think that's one of the values of being part of a Unitarian Universalist Fellowship. We encourage each other to bring up those things. We're not afraid of those difficult conversations. We want to keep moving forward and learning from each other. Um, I was working this week with someone who uh, he and his wife had visited our congregation back in February. And since the pandemic, they haven't really connected via Zoom but she's a longtime Unitarian Universalist. They've been down here for a, a few years and have alternated attending between here and the Venice UU congregation. And uh, he asked me uh, the question about politics and Unitarian Universalism. He said, are there any Republican Unitarian Universalists? Oh, yeah. 
And I said, absolutely there are. Um, because there are a lot of folks who are financially conservative, physically conservative, and socially more progressive or liberal. And those folks find a home in Unitarian Universalist congregations. And then he said, but what about Trump supporters? Can there be Trump supporters who are dedicated to Unitarian Universalists? And I said, that really is a much more difficult question to answer, but we have to have those conversations. No matter what happens this week with the outcome of the election, we have to find a way to bring people together. We have to find a way to welcome folks with whom we disagree. Whether our side wins, the, the candidate or the party that we're supporting wins the election, we need to be humble, we need to be open, and we need to be willing to work to make the future better. If the side that you're supporting loses, we still need to be humble but we need to figure out how to fight like hell to create the culture that we want moving forward in spite of the outcome not being what we want. No matter what happens this week, it's not the time to give up. It is not the time to give up. For many of us, it will be time to figure out how to continue to move forward, to make our voices heard, to be allies of those who are going to continue to be marginalized, in the government, with the Supreme Court, with lots of things that could happen. There is a lot of work to do. So thank you for, for mentioning that. Alice, I see your name next. Yeah, we've been, um, we've been work, working at outside the polling, early voting the past couple of weeks. And I'll tell you this week, we had so many more thumbs up and waving and, and, and just, smiles at us this week than we did last week. So that's just, it was much more encouraging this week than it was a week ago of, of voters voting. So we're happy about that. And my niece keeps telling me, don't worry, don't worry. <laughs> Doesn't keep me awake at night, but you know, it, we're all nervous like everyone else, but thank you. Yeah, yeah. I, I agree with that observation. Um, I've worked, uh, I think seven or eight of the 13 early voting days so far at the Staub uh, Library in Northport. And of course, we all know that we live in a very, very Republican conservative territory where 60% plus of registered voters are registered Republicans. Only about 30% or so are registered Democrats. And then there's a whole bunch of no party affiliations. And so we expect to see Trump parades. We expect to see Republican supporters wherever we go and especially at the polls. But I'll tell you this about yesterday, Saturday I worked all day, 12 hours at the polls. Yesterday I saw more young adult women come to vote. I saw more young people period. I saw more young families. I saw much more racial diversity come all day long. Um, the guy I was working with made the comment as well. I can't believe how many single women have shown up to vote today. By the dozens, um, how many young people, we've seen the numbers throughout America of finally that demographic of the 18 to 25 year olds are showing up to vote. Political parties on both sides always try to court that vote. We always try to say that young people will shape the future of America, but they typically don't show up when it comes time to actually vote. This year, they are voting. Man, that's exciting. I am super, super thrilled with that because I know that no matter what happens this week, that voting block will be there to lift up the future. And so uh, I just found that very, very encouraging. Uh, Ron, did you have something else you'd like to say? You typed in much hope for progress through diversity of thought. Do you have just a minute you'd like to share? Oh yeah, not even a minute. I'm just so um, delighted with our sharing here and the media. We've got to acknowledge the incredible power of the media in the world presenting so much diversity of thought, so much diversity of political opinion in which when we have um, an anti-thesis, an anti-thought, um, negative kind of attack like we've had, 
uh, from the current administration, it's nullified. It, it gets synthesized. We, we as a people have choices. And um, I'm so confident and hopeful uh, that that becomes again the truth of our political system right. in this uh, election that we advance and we progress having conquered that which appears to be such a threat. Thank you so much, Ron. I appreciate your sharing. Mary Jane, you're next. Um, I just wanted to make the comment that there are a huge number of Republicans who are not voting for Trump. And they may have voted for him last time, but they're not voting for him this time, or they're writing in a candidate, or they're going to leave it blank. But there are a ton of Republicans that are not voting for Trump. And I think we need to keep that in mind that it's, it's too easy to just say all the Republicans are going to vote or support Trump. And that is not true. There is, I have never seen an organized movement within the Republican Party uh -huh. to um, support the opposite candidate, like I have seen with this. Very and that, that gives me hope. Yeah. And, and we also have to get along after this ends, one way or the other. And we cannot continue to live in this divided, hateful environment. So these even the, even the people that we didn't agree with, we're gonna all have to get along in order to accomplish anything. That's yeah. it. And that will be what we talk about next Sunday. No matter what happens this week, next Sunday's message is going to be, now what? What comes next? So thank you all for sharing. I appreciate hearing so many voices. And I know that a lot of you would have had something to say um, if you felt comfortable or if we had more time. I do want to just point out that in case you missed it in the Thursday update, Wednesday this week, I'm going to have a couple of opportunities for post-election discussion. Wednesday on Zoom at three in the afternoon and then again at seven o'clock in the evening. We're going to know a lot by Wednesday. We may not know for sure who's won, but we're going to know a lot. And we're going to have feelings. And we're going to have thoughts. We're going to have ideas. And I want to give you a space to share. And so Wednesday at three, Wednesday at 7 p.m. You can come for all of those times, both sessions. You can come and drop in for 10 minutes and then leave, say your piece. But I want to make that a listening space for all of us. For me, I want to hear what you have to say, what's on your heart, what's on your mind, Wednesday, the day after the election. So I invite you to put that on your calendar and drop in. Um, I'll send out an email reminder, probably with the, the Zoom, assuming I remember to do that. Maybe somebody can remind me to do that. Um, so thank you for uh, participating in that. And I know that we've heard the word unprecedented a lot this year, and the term is absolutely fitting. Everything about 2020 is unprecedented. This election, this pandemic, everything we're experiencing is unprecedented. And I anticipate in the next few days that that will also fit the pattern of 2020. And the next week will be unprecedented as well in some positive ways and maybe in some negative ways. Whatever happens, the UUFCC family will continue to encourage each other to spiritual growth, to work for social justice and to be a liberal religious presence here in the Charlotte County area. I'm Ref Dan, and I approve this message. Amen <laughs> and blessed be. Ken has closing words for us. Can't hear you, Ken. One sec. Go ahead, Ken, we can hear you. All right, I found you. These are by Wayne B. Arneson, who was a Unitarian minister for over 40 years. Take courage, friends. The way is often hard. The path is never clear. And the stakes are very high. Take courage, for deep down, there is another truth. 
You are not alone. Amen. Thank you, Ken. And now we extinguish the chalice, but not the light of hope, not the fire of commitment, nor the warmth of community. May those ideals shine in our lives and warm our hearts until we are together again. Just a couple of notes I'd like to share with you. I want to emphasize the email that you received this past week from the Social Justice Committee about um, some medical financial opportunities that uh, we've taken on just to make you aware of. Um, so uh, if you have questions about that and you didn't get that or you need that resent, please let us know and we're happy to resend that. But we got this response from a longtime member, Dave Martin, um, that he's asked me to share. I've worked as a back office volunteer at the Virginia B. Andes Volunteer Community Clinic for about five years and confirmed that the people there do an outstanding job. RIPmedicaldebt.org embodies the idea discussed in the summer 2020 UU World Magazine article, the UUs make medical debt disappear. We think it's wonderful when stores like Publix offers a $50 gas card for only $40, which, uh, which is an opportunity to save 20%. But how about the opportunity to help people with a 100% increase in the value of your donation? Thanks to the Social Justice Committee for their work in bringing these groups to the attention of the entire congregation. Thank you, Dave, for sharing that. And also just one more reminder that next week on the 8th and then the following week on the 15th, we're going to have a Who Are You You class if you'd like to know more about us as a congregation and you're thinking about maybe this is a place, a group of people that you want to put your roots down with and you'd like to join and become a member, or at least learn what that means, these classes would be good opportunities for you. We'll do those at 1130 right after the service. They'll last an hour, give or take, each time on the 8th and the 15th. Please send me an email to let me know that you're interested. That's minister at uufcc.org. Deep breath. This would be a great time to end our service by sharing in our community benediction. Go now in peace. Let's sing together. for being here, for being a part of our service. Thank you for your wonderful words. Thank you again to the caring committee for the beautiful acknowledgement and gift um, of my role here as your minister, which I take very humbly and very seriously. Um, and I do really miss all of you, which is why I end every service with the encouragement and reminder to be a blessing to everyone you meet because everybody needs it. Be a blessing to those you live with because they have to put up with you. They have no choice at this time. And be a blessing to yourself because you deserve it. You deserve grace. You deserve mercy. You deserve joy. You deserve happiness. And treat yourself as if you deserve that. Blessed be to everyone. Thank you for being here.